Review problem number three. We're moving on from kinematics to Newton's laws. In the first part of problem three, we are pushing a uh, box or a crate uh, across the floor. There's friction. So uh, the box is moving at constant speed. We're given the strength of the push. We're given this angle because we're pushing slightly downward. And we're given the weight of the box. We're given the value of mg for this box. And from that information, we're going to figure out what the coefficient of kinetic friction is. So let's do our Newton's second law problem solving process. We started out with a sketch. Now we'll draw a free body diagram. Place that box in the center of the free body diagram. Draw the coordinate system. Now we'll draw all the forces acting on it. We've got this push, and it is at an angle theta below the horizontal. Remember, it doesn't matter where in the picture you draw a vector as long as the direction and magnitude are correct. But it's most convenient in free body diagrams to draw the vectors uh, coming from the center of the object. We've got a gravity force, W. That is the weight of the box. And we've got a normal force to keep this thing from falling through the floor. And lastly, this is not accelerating. It's moving at a constant speed. There's friction in the problem. That friction force opposes the direction of motion. So the friction force is over here. Okay, so let's write down the Newton's second law of equations. I'll start out with the y direction. Because it is a friction problem, and we know that to analyze friction, we need to get the normal force, which you find from looking at the y direction, usually. So we've got the normal force in positive y. We have the gravity force, or the weight, negative y, and we've got a downward component of that push. So if you look at that push force, I'll draw, I'll draw it out a little bigger. There's a push, there's an angle. It has a y component that goes down. That y component is opposite to the angle. So it's going to be F sine theta. And the acceleration in the y direction is zero. This box is remaining on the floor. It's not moving up or down. So the normal force, which is what we're interested in, is W plus F sine theta. Usually, I in this case, I end up substituting mg for w. This time, um, I don't really need to because for whatever reason, the problem doesn't tell you m. The problem tells you the value of w. So I'll just leave it like that. Now, in the uh, x direction, we've got two forces. There's the x component of this push. That x component is adjacent to the angle. It gets cosine for being adjacent. And that push goes to the right, 
is being opposed by the friction force going to the left, and guess what? There's also no acceleration. The box is moving, but it's moving at a constant speed. Its velocity is not changing, therefore its acceleration is zero. Friction force equals mu times m, the definition of friction force. So that coefficient is the x component of the push divided by the normal force, which we found has this expression. Here's your answer to part A. Now part B, the setup is a little different. The same box with the same weight, there's still the same coefficient of friction, you're applying the same magnitude of push, but now you're pushing kind of upward at an angle, or maybe pulling upward at an angle with a rope or something. So a sketch of the problem now looks like this. force is being applied slightly upward. And now the free body diagram looks ever so slightly different. We still have gravity force, normal force, and friction force. And we just change that angle of the, of the push so that it's above the horizontal this time. And as before, we'll analyze the forces in the y direction. So we can solve for the normal force because the normal force has changed. We've got N plus F sine theta. Before it was minus f sine theta, but now this vector is above the horizontal, so that y component points up. We got gravity force, and the acceleration is still zero. This thing is not moving in the y direction. So n is now w minus F sine theta. So let me just compare this normal force in part B to the normal force in part A. In part B, the normal force is smaller than in part A. This term was added in part A. That same term is subtracted in part B. This makes sense. In part A, we're pushing down on that box a little bit, which means the ground has to support not only the box's weight, but also your push. In part B, we're kind of lifting it up a little bit, so the ground doesn't have to support as much force. It doesn't have to apply as much normal force to the box in part B. Less normal force in part B is gonna mean less friction force which, as we'll see, results in the fact that now this box is able to accelerate, whereas in part A, it had zero acceleration. So let's look at that horizontal direction. We'll no longer assume that AX is zero. We've got that push F cosine <coughs> theta minus the friction force equals mAx. We'll substitute 
for the friction force. It's mu times n, where n is the expression we just found. So the acceleration equals f cosine theta minus mu w minus f sine theta over m. And there's one last little detail we have to take care of. It's the fact that we weren't given m, but we know that w is mg. So m equals w divided by g. Put that in there for m. All right. So this problem has, um, I think, an inter interesting concept in it that I might ask you to explain. That concept is how friction force depends on the normal force. In part A, we were pushing down on this object, and when you push down on it, you increase the push between the box and the floor. You increase the normal force. That makes more friction. That makes the situation stickier. In part B, we lifted up the box slightly. Not, not enough to make it lose contact with the ground, but enough that we were able to reduce the amount of normal force. And when that normal force gets reduced, then the friction force gets reduced. Which meant that we were able to have some acceleration in part B. So, I might ask you to explain this concept of friction force depending on the normal force, um, surfaces stick together more when they're pushed together harder.